if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them. But he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Our message today to start off our series on financial peace to give you the foundation is simply this. It's called discipline over comfort. Come on, now. Come on. Come on say it with me. Say discipline, discipline. Over, comfort. over comfort. Now, comfort is easy. Yes, it is. It's easy to sit down. Are y'all here? It's easy to sit on the couch. It's easier to sit on a lazy boy. It's easy to do all of that. But to get up off of this couch takes discipline. Well, Are y'all here? Uh-huh. It don't take no work to sit down. It don't take no work to lay down. Uh-huh. But it takes discipline to get up uh, yes. and to get moving. Uh-huh. So let me show you what I'm talking about. The word chastening, when you look it up in the scripture... The word chastening means this. Go to the next slide. The word chastening means this. It means to educate. It means to train up. It means to discipline. It means to learn. It means to teach. Are y'all still with me? So the word chastening means all of these things, but it specifically means, Lord, help me slow down. It specifically means to discipline. Are y'all still with me? So now, let's go back to the scripture and take out the word chastening and put in the word discipline. Are you still with me? When you have the word discipline in there, it reads a little bit differently. Because when we think of chastening, we think of whooping. Come on in here, y'all. You think of getting a... I I know we don't whoop in this this day and age, and we should. Uh, Well, that's a whole other message. But whenever you hear chastening, you think whooping, right? But chastening was not, uh, was not whooping only. Chastening, when it meant whooping, was at the end of the definition. It means if you didn't get all this other stuff, then you got the whooping. So before we get to the whooping, let's get to what chastening means. Let's get to the discipline first. Are y'all still with me? So let's read it now. If you endure discipline. God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we respected them. Are you still with me? Shall we not much more readily be in a subjection to the father of spirits or to the father of all fathers and live? For they indeed for a few days disciplined us as seemed best to them. But he, capital H, God, but God for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no discipline seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nobody says, discipline me, please. Right, right. Nobody runs to the front of the discipline line. Right, right, right. Are y'all here? Yeah. Because it is painful for the present. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Now go to the next slide because I want you to focus in on these last two scriptures. Hebrews 12 and it is 10 and 11. This is where our focus is today. Put it on the side screens as well. For they indeed for a few days disciplined us. So I want you all to see 
that the thrust of this scripture is talking about discipline. Now, when God gave this to me, man, I was like, God, what does this have to do with finances? This doesn't make any sense. What does this have to do with finances? So I want y'all right now to get y'all pen and paper out or your pencil and paper or your crayon and paper or, or, your, or your tablet or your phone, whatever you take notes with, because I'm getting ready to tell you some stuff I've never heard before until God told me. Are y'all still with me? Watch this. He told me, he said, Jason, the issue of finances is not one that is rooted in a lack of faith, but rather it is rooted in a lack of discipline. Are y'all here? Because everybody got faith. And so if faith was the key to finances or to wealth, that everybody who had faith would have finances and be wealthy. But faith is not the issue. The overwhelming and prevailing issue that deals with our finances, whether that that we have or the lack thereof, is not faith, it's not how much you love God, it's not how much you need it, it's not how much you want or desire it, it's one issue, it's our discipline. Are you here? It's an issue of your discipline. One, I I can prove it to you. I'm going to say something very controversial. You've been tithing for years, but you are still in the same place financially. Are you here? So is it an issue of faith or is it something else? Because your faith has caused you to keep tithing. And according to what we've been saying That act should be the the key that unlocks everything. But it is not, if it is not mixed with discipline. Are you here? I'm going to talk about this next week, but I'm going to tease it right now. In the church, we've told you what to do with the tithe. We've told you what to do with the 10%, but we've never taught you what to do with the 90% that's left over. And so after today, I'm going to take 90 days to talk about that 90%. But we can't talk about your 90% if you don't understand the discipline of the 10. Because the tithing that you do is not just about your faith. It's not just about checking off a box. The tithing that you do is a reflection of the discipline that you do or don't have. Y'all got quiet in here. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. Because this message had an ouch on me first. Are you here? So tithing, Pastor Terrence, the issue of finances is not about faith entirely. It's about our discipline. Discipline has always been the issue since the beginning of time. I'm getting ready to prove it to you. Stay with me. We won't be in here long because I know it's hot. Issue from the beginning of time has been one of discipline. Are you still with me? Whenever God created a people, he put in them things. No, he told them things he wanted them to do to shape their discipline, to shape their response, which shapes who they belong to. Uh Are you still with me? If you see any of my children, and you don't see me, you'll still know they belong to me by how they behave. Right, right, right. There's certain things that they are disciplined or taught to do. Right. If you are older than them, they are going to say, yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. If they don't, come see me. Are y'all here? Uh-huh. That's what they've been disciplined to do. Are you still here? And because of their discipline, it marks who they belong to. That when you see Turner's kids, you'll see, oh, they belong to Jason and Rhoda Turner. Because them kids is discipline. The same way you can see a bunch of unruly kids with no discipline and say, ooh, they must belong to so-and-so. Because they lack discipline. Are are y'all here? So discipline has been God's 
issue with us since the beginning of time. How do I know? You can go to Genesis 2, 16 and 17. Write it down. Read it later. But Genesis 2, 16 and 17, when God started with mankind, he said, I'm going to give you one thing to be disciplined by. You can have all of this. I just need you to do one thing. This over here, don't touch. It's not because it wasn't edible. It's not because it wasn't good. But it was because the thing that he needed to put in their midst of them to gauge their discipline. Because people that belong to God are disciplined people. They know how to do what God has said. They know what to touch what he has said. And they know how to leave alone what he has said, leave alone. Because the mark of that determines if you belong to him or if you belong to you. Y'all quiet in here today. Just say ouch. So because in the beginning that they didn't get that right, they felt that as a result, sin entered in. What is sin? Sin is the lack of the correct response to God's discipline. Sin is you saying, I'm going to do what I want to do, irregardless of what God has to say. That's what sin is. I'm not disciplined by him or his word. I am an undisciplined person. I'm going to do what I won't feel or think. You, sir, ma'am, are in sin. It simply means you're not disciplined. But because God loves us, he wouldn't leave us that way. He said, I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to take you out of Egypt. I'm going to bring you into the promised land on this journey into the promised land. I'm going to show you how to be my people. But because you didn't get the one thing right, now let me give you 10 things. So it went from one thing to him now saying, let me give you 10 commandments. Uh He gave them 10 commandments, four that dealt with him, six that dealt with how to treat each other. They were commandments that were showing them how to be disciplined. Children, obey your mothers and fathers. That's how you be disciplined. If you married, stop talking to somebody else that ain't your wife or husband. Discipline. Are you here? Uh I don't have time to get into it, but it ain't that when she looks so good or he is so fine. Uh Uh-uh. It's an issue of your lack of discipline in your flesh. Are y'all here? Cheating is, oh, I failed. No, cheating is you don't have no discipline. So he gave commandments to help us to be disciplined. Uh And we, because we are undisciplined people, messed it up. Uh Are y'all here? We couldn't stay with the Ten Commandments. We just, we couldn't, we couldn't stay with them. We created over 300 additional laws to describe how to do the 10. Because whenever you give us a law, we try to figure out how close can we get to it before we actually go over it. So when you say honor, does that mean with, with, with just my mind or with my mouth too, y'all? And we try to find out how close can we get to it. So they had to write 300 and something additional laws to help you understand how to deal with tears because we always try to find ways to remain undisciplined. So there's no need of me talking to you about finances if I haven't talked to you first about the discipline that is necessary to keep the finances. And for you to understand that it's a fight that began before you. It's a fight that is in the core of the essence of of the sin nature of humanity. It's something you have to fight all the time to remain disciplined. So your inability to handle finances is not because you're a bad person. It's because you're wrestling with discipline that your mama wrestled with, your grandmama wrestled with, and Eve wrestled with. Are you here? Because it's not something that started with you. It's something that's trying to continue through you, but you've got to say, no, this stops here, and I'm going to be disciplined. God realized that people were who they were, And they're going to still try to find a way to be undisciplined. So he said they can't 
live by the law and be perfected by the law because the law is going to kill them. So, Jesus, can you please go? And Jesus went down through 42 generations. He stayed hidden for 30 years. On the 30th year, when he could become a rabbi or a teacher, he became a teacher. He had 12 disciples to follow him. Are y'all still with me? And his first message is found in Matthew 5 through 7, and it is 10 Beatitudes and a whole sermon. Are you here? So you couldn't follow the one. Are y'all still with me? You dropped the ball with the Ten Commandments. So now Jesus shows up with a remix to do nine Beatitudes and a sermon that is teaching you how to live like a believer, how to live in the kingdom. Are you still with me? And the people that followed him were called disciples. Not the gang like Bloods and Crips and Disciples. No. The original disciples, only two of y'all laugh. The OG disciples were those that followed Jesus. The word disciples only appeared once in the Old Testament because it showed up in the New Testament because the word disciples, write this down, means disciplined ones. Are you here? The ones that follow Christ were not called Christians. They were called disciplined ones because the mark that they belonged to Jesus and to not any other teacher was the level of their discipline compared to everybody else. Are you here? The word Christian was used as a a, a comical statement to tease people that follow Christ. And so we removed ourselves from being disciples or disciplined ones to being comedy and becoming Christians. And so now the thought of Christianity is comical, inconsistent, changing the word to appease you and your position. No discipline whatsoever. God wants us to leave the Christianity bags behind and go to the place of saying, I'm a disciple. I am a disciplined one. Because the ones that he's going to open doors for are the disciplined ones. The ones that he's going to open heaven for are the disciplined ones. The ones he's going to make a way out of no way are the disciplined ones. So the question you have to ask yourself today is, Lord, a- a- am I disciplined? I'm going to say something to you again. Write it down. I fact-checked it. I called other theologians. I had to make sure what I heard in my spirit was actually right. I want you to write this down. Watch this. Jesus, when he was with the disciples, his focus was to develop their discipline for God, not their faith for him. Jesus wasn't interested in building their faith. Want to know why? Why do you need faith for somebody you can see? Jesus was with them. So why do you have to have faith for Jesus when you can touch him? It doesn't require faith. Faith is needed for the thing that you cannot see. So Jesus, when he was with them, he wasn't teaching them faith. He was teaching them discipline of how to live in the kingdom, of how to live as a follower of God. Are you still with me? It wasn't until Jesus left that they had to begin using faith. Are you here? And I think sometimes we have our focus in the wrong place. We have our focus in developing our faith so hard that we forget about discipline. Are you here? Discipline is paramount. 
You disciplining yourself and what you think and what you spend time with and what you say and what you do and how you behave and how you respond is paramount. Where you are in your life right now today is a result of not your faith, but your discipline or lack thereof. Are you here? My way today is a result of my lack of discipline. It ain't nobody's fault but mine. Right. Nobody's fault but mine. Right. My fault. Right. Right, right, right. Went by Popeyes and I had to stop. What? Nobody's fault but. Right. Okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> so if I want to change this, it's not an issue of prayer. Come talk to me, y'all. I know this is hard. It's not an issue of faith, man. It's an issue of discipline. I got to decide to get up from the couch. Get up from the comfort. Yeah. Get up from what is easiest yeah. to go do the thing that is the most difficult. Yeah. I got to go to a gym and lift something and run on something. Right. Right. I don't want to do that. Well, got you. Got but where I am, it's a lack of my discipline. Ray, let me tell you something funny. Ray's my, Ray's my friend and trainer. Can I tell you something funny, Ray? No. Can I really? Okay, watch this. I was preaching Tuesday. This ain't in my notes. It's just in my heart. Can I share it with you? It ain't going to cost you no extra. Stay with me, y'all. I was preaching Tuesday in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It was being back home, big stage. It was just beautiful. Ray, I was preaching. Now, I'm losing weight because I'm doing intermittent fasting. But in the midst of my preaching, about 10 minutes in, I realized, my God, I'm out of shape. (laughs) I'm skittier, but I'm out of shape. I was winded. I was holding on to stuff. At one point in the sermon, I told everybody, talk to each other. Dan, play something. I got to drink some water. That's how winded I was. Word was still anointed. People still got delivered. But my undiscipline, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, caused me to be where I was. Faith didn't change it. Even though I was in the midst of an anointed place preaching God's word. My faith didn't change it. Why? Because my discipline or my undiscipline unlocked it. Are you here? Uh So where you are today ain't nobody's fault but yours. So you have to deal with what do I have to do to check my discipline? Uh Write this down. Being disciplined is a process. And it takes time. And it takes intentionality. Getting my wind back takes time. It means I got to hit a bike. I got to hit a recumbent bike. I got to hit, what's that sled thing called? The sled, huh? Sled. I got to hit that. I don't want to hit that. What I'd rather hit is this. Are y'all here? That's what I'd rather hit. But if I want comfort, I can have this. But comfort only takes you so far. I'm going to talk about next week if God lets me. You got to get to a place of saying, I got to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. Are y'all still with me? Because listen, I can teach you all the principles in the world. I can give you all the nuggets about finances. I can bring in world-renowned financial teachers that can teach you about home loans and savings and all types of stuff. But if you are not disciplined, it won't make a difference. You will have had a day of great note taking and that's it. You'll have the answer to your situation locked away in a book on your shelf collecting dust and you'll remain in the same state Because if you don't apply discipline to what you've learned, you'll be in the same place. Are y'all here today? It takes discipline. Turn to somebody and say, it takes discipline. discipline. Come on, turn to somebody else and say, it takes discipline. discipline. So let me show you some things real, real quick. About our God, I'm almost finished because I just want to set the foundation today. We got weeks to lean into this, but I, I, I want to show you something about God. When God designed us, 
He designed us with practices of things we should be doing. These practices help to develop our discipline. Are y'all still with me? Watch this. I'm going to show you a few. Can I show you a few? Okay. So everything that God tells you to do, he tells you what it is for. But it is also something that does something for you. I'm going to give you an example. Tithing. What tithing is for is for the care of the church and the priest, according to the word. It's the care of the church and the priest. That's what tithing is for. But what tithing does for you is that it helps you to develop financial discipline. That's the whole point of tithing is to help you develop discipline within your finances. If when you get paid, you know that God said release a tithe with this 10%, and if you fight with doing it, what you're fighting with is your discipline concerning it. Are you here? I'm now to a place, 30 some, almost 47 years later, regarding tithing to where it's not an issue. It's not even a thought. It's, this is what I do. It's part of my discipline. But it didn't happen overnight. It took time, and it took me getting to the place to say, even if I have to, with a 90, do less, buy less, spend less, go out eating less, I'll do that to make sure that my tithe is in place. Because my tithe is developing my discipline. If you can't be disciplined with 10%, stop asking God to give you a million. Are you here? Why would he give an undisciplined person millions when he can't trust you with 10% over 100? Y'all getting quiet in here. And I know what we say because I used to say, well, Lord, when I get more, I can do more. And he's saying, no, you won't. Because you only do what you practice. And if you're practicing now stinginess and being undisciplined, you will practice the same thing with a million or with a hundred million. So stop asking him to let you hit the Powerball. God, just let me hit it. I'll help the church. You won't. You finna help yourself first. And it's going to be a year before we can find you. Y'all got quiet. So I need y'all to stop playing because I need my numbers to hit. I mean, because I'm disciplined. Come on, Johnny. I'm disciplined. You can laugh because I'm going to hit it, Doc. (laughs) I just need y'all to stop playing it so that averages can become. Let me stop. Let me stop. (laughs) But tithing, God put it there not because he wants to punish you. God placed it there to develop your discipline in finances because this is what he knows. If he can get you to be disciplined to give the 10% like he wrote, then you'll be disciplined to give anything else that he speaks. How can he trust you to give what he speaks when he can't trust you to be disciplined to give what he wrote? Y'all getting quiet in here, but I'm finna get worse before I get lighter. Jesus. It's an issue of discipline. Don't get mad at me. I didn't write it. I ain't your God. I didn't create you. These are things he placed in humanity to mark our discipline. And this is why you are not advancing in finances because he will not advance a person who is not disciplined in their finances. Because the thing that you're disciplined in is the thing that you will advance in. If you're disciplined in lifting weights, you're going to advance in it. You're going to be cut. You're going to have muscles. You're going to have all this type of stuff. But if you ain't disciplined in money, you'll still be broke. You will be a beautiful bodybuilding, muscle-wearing woman or man who is broke. Because you're disciplined in one area, but undisciplined in another. 
Discipline from one thing doesn't carry to the next thing because every area has its own level of discipline. Are you here? So let me give you some other examples much quicker. Fasting. Why in the world would God give us fasting? Jesus, you don't like us eating? I like eating, Jesus. But fasting, fasting wasn't about eating, but it was about disciplining your appetite and your mouth. Because if I could get your mouth to be closed when you want it to be open, it will help to discipline you. If I can get you to discipline your appetite and to tell your appetite you are not greater than what it is that I want to do, what it is that God told me to do. That's the whole point of fasting. The reason why you should be doing it periodic in your life because it's helped to, to develop the discipline of your mouth and your appetite. Uh-huh. Y'all got quiet and just say ouch if you can't say amen. Uh-huh. Prayer is to discipline your relationship with God and to discipline your mind. Your mind won't be all over the place if you get it focused in prayer. You won't be figuring out how you can smoke him. Y'all got quiet. If you're in a place of prayer, you won't be figuring out how can I get even with her if you're in a place of prayer because it focuses your mind. It disciplines your mind. You won't be thinking revenge. You'll be thinking grace and mercy. Y'all quiet in here, say out if you can't say amen. Praise and worship. It's not something that's put in service to stall so you can get here late. Uh I got quiet in here. Praise and worship is not put in the service so it gives the pastor more time to come from the back room. Praise and worship was designed by God way before the church was established. Praise and worship was designed to discipline the focus of your heart. Because that's what worship and praise is. It's saying, regardless of what's going on around me right now, my focus is on that you are dependable. You are hateable. You are dependable. You are dependable. You are dependable. Worship will shift you yes, like that yes, because it's designed to deal with the discipline of the focus of your heart. Y'all still with me? Yes. Forgiveness is designed to deal with the discipline of your emotions. When you can't forgive, it's because your emotions are undisciplined. Are you here? And I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying this is a quick fix. I'm saying this is why he tells us to forgive. Forgiveness, hear me. I don't have time to teach on it today. But forgiveness is not meant to be done when somebody does something against you. Forgiveness is meant to be practiced and rehearsed every single day of your life so that when somebody does do something, it's not a big deal for you to let it go because you've been practicing, you've been disciplined by forgiveness. Are y'all here? Uh-huh. Ooh. Can I keep going? Yeah. Abstinence. Kids is in here, so I can't say what it means. But we at the age kids at three, four, and five I already know what it means. Uh-huh. But I'm going to leave that to you to teach it. Are y'all with me? Amen. But abstinence is not designed to keep you from a good time. Uh-huh. It's designed by God to discipline your urges. Yeah. Because if you don't discipline your urges before you get married, you, we think that marriage is a magical potion. Uh-huh. That whatever we did before, we won't have the appetite or urges to do after. That's not true. Right. Which is why he tells you don't do that. Because right. if you never taste that, you don't get an appetite for it. Right. You don't get an urge for it. So he tells you leave it alone. Stay away from it. It doesn't belong to you. This is why I'm saying no, not because I'm rejecting your good feelings and ties, because I'm helping you to protect your heart and your mind. Yes. Yes. Develop the discipline of your urges and stop doing that before marriage and stop doing it in marriage with people that ain't your spouse. Somebody say discipline. discipline. Diets. Diets. 
They're in the scripture. But it's a discipline of your drive. It's one of the greatest drives that's in your body. Exercise is a discipline of your body. Because don't, don't, I ain't met one person that said they like going to the gym. Are you here? You may be used to it. You may be disciplined by it. You may like the results of it. Of it. I even watched Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, 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 documentary. He didn't say he liked it. He, as a matter of fact, he said there was times he hated it. But he got so used to it, he got disciplined. So now, at the age of 70-something, every day he's going to the gym. Are y'all here? Yeah. Are y'all following Rock on, on uh, like, Instagram or something? Yeah. Yeah. No, nobody. Uh, don't follow him. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to follow Rock. Because every day, he in the gym pumping some iron at Iron Island. I, I don't want to see you at Iron Island. <laughs> I want to see you at, <laughs> never mind. Yeah, I, yeah, a bunch of them every day, not just on cheat days, every day, every day. <laughs> Sleep is the discipline of your rest. Well, I could just keep going on and on. You can't. That's not how God designs you. You will kill yourself. He designed your body to rest. So much so when he created mankind, he said there's six days to work, one day of rest, Sabbath. Keep it holy is one of the commandments because you have to sleep. Now, if you sleep in 10 hours, you are no longer exercising the discipline of rest. You are exercising the discipline of laziness. Get up. You don't need eight hours. Get up. Are y'all here? Church. I heard you. Church. Going to church. Is a discipline of community. Are you here? Yes. Church forces you to be in community and to see other people. God designed it to work on that discipline so that you're not so focused on yourself that you can't see your neighbor. Right. Right. Are you here? Uh-huh. Am I excited every week to come to church? No. Come and I pastor the church. Right. I preach her every week. Right. But I go because it's a discipline right. that he put in me. So much so that when I'm on vacation, we try to find a church to go to. Because right. it feels wrong yep. to have a Sunday go by we not be in church. Right. But that's because I've been disciplined by community. Right. Right. Y'all still with me? I, I, y'all still with me? Uh-huh. Fellowship, having friends, is the discipline of your accountability. A person who doesn't want friends doesn't want somebody in their business. And the reason you don't want somebody in your business is because you don't want to be accountable. Are you here? Friendship or fellowship is the discipline of accountability. I got friends in my life, and I don't want them always saying, well, you know, they don't call me Pastor Jason. Well, you know, Jason, you're doing it. I ain't asked you. But thank you. You're right. Because it's necessary. I need accountability. You need accountability. That's why God designed it. Iron sharpens iron. Uh, I don't have time to go through the scriptures about friendship, but he designed friendship. So for you to put it at an arm's distance and to run away from it, it's because you're not disciplined. Are you still with me? So don't talk to me about being rich when you're an undisciplined friend and you want to be by yourself. Why would God bless you for you to have it just for you? He blesses you to be a blessing to others. And you can only have others if you have accountability through friendship and accountability through community. Your giving, this is not your tithing, but your giving is a discipline of your generosity. When you are not willing to, to respond to the ear of God, to do what he's telling you to do in the moment, whether it be at church or whether it be outside this church, then it's a reflection of your heart not having discipline concerning generosity. Because a person who has discipline concerning generosity is not concerned by what he or she is being told to give by God because they know that the same generous God that gave them what they have is the same generous God that will make sure they'll have more. It's a lack of discipline. Last one, authority 
is a lack of having authority is designed to bring again more accountability. Your boss at work is for accountability. Y'all don't like that. Your, 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 your people that are above you, your supervisors, all these people that are in places of authority is to help you with accountability, to be disciplined so you don't go unchecked and just do whatever you want to do whenever you want to. Are y'all still with me? Yes. Can I show you one more scripture? Amen. I heard two amens. Amen. I'm going to show you one more scripture and I'm done. Go to Proverbs 10 and 4 and Proverbs 13 and 4. They're both on the screen at the same time. And then I'm finished talking about discipline for today. It says here, Proverbs 10, 4, 13, 4, the soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Proverbs 10 and 4. He who deals with a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes one rich. Are y'all here? Yeah. So look at the 10th chapter and the 4th verse. Watch this. It's talking about your hand. If you have a slack hand, you become poor now. Slack meaning you're not accountable. You're not disciplined with what's being put in your hand. You get $10 put in your hand. You know you got $8 worth of bills, but you go to the mall to, pin, to buy $7 worth of stuff. And now you got $3 left. And you five dollars short on your bill. Now you begging God, God, make a way out of no way. And God is saying, I already did. So now deal with the slackness of your hand. Figure it out yourself. Are you here? Because a disciplined person, when something is placed in their hand, goes to God and says, God, what am I supposed to do with this? How should this be handled? Because I don't want to continually to be in a state of being poor. Because your state of being poor wasn't because of where you were born. It's because of what you did. Choices. Discipline. Stop blaming everybody else. Are you here? Well, ain't no jobs. No, this job is just ain't the one you want. You want one with an office, with a corner view, buy some water, where they give you a car and a fat check. Why would anybody do that for you when you're not willing to sweep the floor? You're not willing to do what's necessary to work, to gain relationships, accountability, friends, favor, to move up. You want to have level 10 without going through level 1. And everything that God does, he, he does it with layers. He does it with tears. He does it with levels. Are you here? His favor may skip you a few levels, but you don't go from nothing to the top. Right. And you ain't put your hand to do nothing. Right. Are you here? Right. But a diligent hand makes you rich now. Right. Take your hand. And whew, I was trying to say something. Take your hand and go do something with it. Take your hand and flip some burgers. Take your y'all getting quiet. Take your hand and drive an Uber. Take your hand and deliver newspapers. Do they do that anymore? Take your hand and do something. And in the midst of you taking your hand to do something, God will open doors to make you rich. Are you here? Rich doesn't mean millionaire. Rich means having enough to handle what your responsibilities are and to be in a position to bless others. Because rich and wealthy are two different things. Are you here? Rich is the person the check was given to. Wealthy is the person that signed the check that gave it to the rich person. Are you here? So you can't be wealthy until you first get rich, but you can't get rich until you get up from comfort and stop being poor. Come on, come on. Are you here? Yes. Well, Pastor, I'm going to hit the Powerball. We'll keep on playing then. Right. Keep on playing. Next verse, done. Watch this. So now it goes from your hand to talking about your soul. Because the hand is in the 10th chapter. 
The 13th chapter talks about your soul. What does that mean? It means if you don't deal with your hand, this attitude will get into your soul. I wish I had more people here to hear what I'm saying. If you don't deal with a lazy hand, it'll make your soul lazy. So you go from having lazy uh, responses to now becoming a lazy person. Are you still with me? Watch what it says. The soul of a lazy man desires but has nothing. Ooh, I wish this ticket hit. And what you going to have? Nothing. Y'all got quiet. I wish somebody come see about me. I wish somebody come and do something for me. Listen, you can't live your whole life like that. Right. Are you still with me? Yes, soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. The lazy man will have nothing in the future. Your lazy hand makes you poor now, and your lazy soul will ensure that you are poor in the future. But the same way that your diligent hand makes you rich now, your diligent soul will make sure that you are rich in the future. God has designed a way to take care of your now and your future. But it starts not with your faith. It starts with your discipline. You got to decide that I want discipline over comfort. Because this is easy. This has a reward, but this reward is immediate and it's short-lived. But the reward of discipline, its reward is far off, but it is enjoyed forever. Are y'all here today? Lay your hands on your chest and say, Lord, help me to be disciplined. Awesome time. Thank you for joining us at CFFC. We also want to connect with you further throughout the week. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up in our small groups at cffc.org forward slash small dash groups. See you this week.